there's a new evil empire. Seems like the Dodgers are trying to just take over the baseball world right now. 1.025 billion dollars committed to two of the most talented stars on planet Earth who play baseball. I think a congratulations is in order. This is the Mount Rushmore of organizations in sports. That boy, Yosh. The guys that chose to be here, I think, understand what the Dodgers are all about. It's always a dream of mine to play for the Dodgers. It is pretty insane to, like, think about. Don't forget you have Mookie Betts, you have Freddie Freeman. Kershaw right. has to go back there. Hi, guys. Good to be back. This will be a fun year. The pressure on that organization right now is how high. Having all this talent doesn't guarantee you a championship. You could still get punked in a best of five division series. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on with our ball club. It's going to get hot. It's going to get fast. It's going to get noisy. Stay in the moment. season has been amazing. We all know the Dodgers had a great offseason, right? Andrew Friedman hit a thousand this offseason, but that was the offseason. Now it's got to play out on the field. There was a lot of things that happened uh, this winter. It's a lot of exciting things and uh, the bar is going to be raised even higher for all of us. I'm not a rah-rah guy. I don't believe in rah-rah. What I believe in is the organizational buy-in, trust, doing things the right way, and appreciating something bigger than us. Today, is, I think it's um, nearly like 100 TV media is coming for Shohei for the first day of the spring training. So, you know, it's, it's so exciting. It's, and also in Japan, it's big news, uh, this opening day for the spring training. This, I never see like this, you know, just for the spring training, I mean, not a game, you know? So it's a huge. What's going on at the winter meetings? All the talk is about who's going to sign Shohei Otani. I've never seen a free agency like Otani's. There's never been someone who's so committed to not telling us anything. At the same time, there was more enthusiasm and interest in this than really any other free agency in the history of the game. Going into the winter meetings, uh, we had had a really good sit down with Shohei and his agent, Nez Bolello, on the Friday before. Uh, the winter meetings and so we went into that feeling optimistic but I think you know we had heard so many different things about what he was looking for and pretty quickly realized that we just didn't really know much. Teams have been warned if anything leaks about meetings or when the meetings are happening that will be held against them. Are you able to say anything about the show right now? Am I able to say that? Yeah, we met with him. He's yeah. the first person that has acknowledged that they met with him. Anxiety, interest, uh, speculation, it was all there, right? Do you think that could impact your guys' chances of signing him? We're just not going to talk about it. I don't think even executives seem to have any idea what he wants. They seem sort of as baffled as everyone else. There was a private jet that left Anaheim today going to Toronto. John Morosi earlier sort of said that this is getting closer, it's imminent. Well, certainly for me, following it, being in the middle of it, being wrong, uh, it, it wasn't necessarily my, my favorite day of, of my career. This is a total mystery. Uh, no well, one knows what well, Otani's doing what... but Otani. So I was uh, at my son's soccer game, and all of a sudden my phone rings. Otani makes his decision known on his Instagram page. And I realized it's Nez, and Nez said, you got him. It's like, excuse me? 
everyone in the world seemed like they found out at the same time. It was just kind of a, a, a windfall after that of texts and uh, some logistics, but incredible feeling. 10 years, $700 million. Staying in Southern California, but he's gonna be wearing Dodger blue for the foreseeable future. There was just something in me that felt that he wanted to be a Dodger ultimately. Obviously, negotiations were going to happen, and that's part of it. Um, but I always felt that we had everything that he desired and aspired for. I was a teammate of uh, Hideo Nomo's, and to see what that did for the country of Japan, and now you see Shohei and Yoshinobu, and I think we've painted the, the country of Japan blue. I've been in this town 40 years, and it's the first time I've come to a press conference where the line to get in was a half a mile long an hour before the press conference. This is insanity. This is not just local, not just national. This is global. There's reporters from all over the world here. This is bigger than LeBron. This is bigger than Shaquille O'Neal. This is the biggest free agent signing in the history of this city, maybe in history of baseball, maybe in history of all of American sport. He, he's, he's a movie star. This is, this is like Brad Pitt. This is crazy. So now for the first time, left. Mm -mm. Not right. Yeah. OK. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, Shohei has been at the top of our uh, wish list for a long time. And for us, it was about just preparing as much as we possibly could, just to make sure that he fully understood you know, what we were about, what we are about going forward, um, and to represent ourselves in the best light possible. He's a one-of-a-kind player, and it was a one-of-a-kind event here in terms of press conferences. I was thinking, you know, the, the center field plaza is relatively new. Where would they have held this dang thing before this was built here? Because it was packed out here, even with this brand new space and, and all this room. So uh, incredible with how many people there were. Today, the franchise that brought us Jackie Robinson and Sandy Koufax and so many of the all-time greats celebrates the arrival of a ball player that stretched baseball's imagination. There's once in a while, there's once in a lifetime, and then there's once in forever. I can't believe how many people have reached out to me, like congratulating me. I didn't do anything. I just get to stand up there and call the games. But uh, people that aren't even baseball fans, it seems like, reaching out and excited about this. And uh, man, I've heard what Fernando Mania was like. And I'm interested to see if this is something like that once the season gets going. Wherever Shohei goes, I can't wait to see. I've been following him six years. Not only Japanese, but also um, people in the group, in the world expect him to uh, play in a playoff. もちろんワールドシリーズ勝つことですし、ま、僕自身まだポストシーズンは行ったことがないので、ま、まずレギュラーシーズン、そこを目指したいですし、ま、その先にワールドシリーズで勝つっていうのを目標にしたいなと思
was trying to get out of the way of the third baseman's throwing a double play ball, and I tried to push off my right foot and then kind of jab out of the way, and my cleat got stuck in the dirt and hyperextended it and then kind of rolled out to my right. Well, this is one of those areas that you just hold your breath. I texted all my family and friends. I'm like, I'm probably tore my ACL or did something to my leg that's pretty serious. So I definitely knew right away something wasn't right, and uh, I just didn't know how severe it was going to be. There was uh, an ACL, a uh, torn ACL. Um, it's uh, it's going to be the, the season. <laughs> I think every baseball player's dream is to play shortstop for, for the Los Angeles <laughs> Los Angeles Dodgers. So, um, yeah, I think that's one of the hardest parts. Yeah, when your season gets taken away before it even starts, uh, especially in a big year where you know I felt like I finally you know was getting a chance to, to play shortstop every day, uh, it sucked for sure. So, um, but at this point, you know. It's in the past and, and I've moved on and you know, injuries are a part of sports and you gotta take care of what you can and you're with your PT and rehab and, and move on. Those first month or so was tough. You know, like just even standing up out of bed like really hurt, like gravity, putting gravity on it hurt and basically the first two or three weeks it was rough. I mean I couldn't sleep at night, I'm throwing pillows against the wall trying to, you know, just do anything to get some sleep and I think maybe I got three or four hours every night on a good day. To mitigate the mood on the bad days, Gavin Lux goes to a good place, home in Wisconsin. There he surrounds himself with family, including his sister Megan and Molly O'Boyle, a seasonal athletic trainer with the NFL's Carolina Panthers. She is also Gavin's fiance and here, her presence transcends that of the friendly smile and the welcoming hug. I kind of play the girlfriend role and the supportive role, but also I can give him some insight if he has questions about something in his rehab or even that first week of surgery, I was helping cueing him like, pick up your toes when you're walking into crutches. So it's definitely been helpful to kind of have like an inside scoop of what he's been going through with this injury and be able to play a supportive athletic trainer role, but also a supportive girlfriend role. She's done a very good job at both. <laughs> She's been by my side through the whole process, which, you know, it's tough. I am probably haven't been the easiest person to talk to the last seven months, being away from, you know, baseball and everything, but she's uh, been anything I could have asked for, for sure. Throw. Well, really good catch. Oof, nice, Yosh. That a boy. With Yamamoto, he had been on our radar for, you know, a, a while. Spent some time this past year going over to Japan and to appreciate the arm talent in person and to watch the way he competes, I think just further solidified just how interested we were. Another game, another Japanese phenom. I mean, this guy is, you know, 5'10". It doesn't bring a whole lot of mass to the mound. Uh, really quick arm, and, and what comes out of his hand is exceptional. Thomas strikes out swinging. That's nasty. It was in Kobe in 2022, watching him pitch, and he lived up to that. It was a very hotly contested market. Plan A from the beginning of the offseason was if we could somehow line up and sign Shohei and, and Yoshi, you know, how incredible that would be. Didn't spend too much time thinking about it in that it just wasn't that realistic, I guess, until it was.
We got it done. We got the deal done. Looking good. <laughs> you excited? Yes. Very excited. So I talked to Joel. I'm going to work on my Japanese. And you're going to work on your English. And then we're going to meet somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Yoshinobu self-admitted said that he's always been a Dodger fan and um, you know you hear things um, before of do two Japanese players want to play together is the stage big enough for both of them but I think for me again it was more of you know if the guy wants to be here um, he's gonna sign and and for me in my chair uh, we want people that want to be here um, because they have more skin in the game he was born to wear this uniform. Look at that. Please join me in officially introducing number 18, Yoshinobu Yamamoto to the Los Angeles Dodgers. I am beyond ecstatic to become a member of this historic franchise and cannot express how much it means to me to be able to call Los Angeles my new home. He was very thoughtful about this transition and how it was going to go for him. And he was curious about a lot of different things, how we were going to use him, what our intentions were. He was willing to do whatever it took. Our goal was just to have Yoshinobu be the best version of Yoshinobu all year, and especially when we get to October. With this being your first spring training, what have the last couple of days just been like for you adjusting to this team and pitching here in the States? え、そうですね。He's much more reliant on body weight type exercises, flexibility, pliability. It's not really necessarily about strength, although everything he does seems to play into getting stronger and durable, and he's, he's had a pretty good run of success in terms of staying healthy and performing to the level that uh, he expects himself to perform to. を大きく使うところから無駄のない調整能力になっていこうとしたら大きく動かすとなったらああいう形になるんですね。で、東急はもうちょっと小さい形になりますけども調整が必要。元々のこう体の使い方が間違ってるんだよっていう風に教えていただ
This will be Gavin's first time coming back since the season. We're at a place right now that he can pretty much do, do everything. Uh, we're just working on, you know, strengthening him. You know, being back here is always, you know, you kind of get the itch a little bit and, uh, you know, going towards spring training and getting closer and closer. I think, you know, you just get the itch a little more, get the itch a little more. So, yeah, it's, it's, it, it always is good being back here. You think, like, the hammy's, like, getting, like, sore, like, I don't know, like, I guess it's, like, normal soreness, but it just don't feel like it bounces back as fast as it used to. Yeah. Is that, like, a strength thing? Like, just got to keep building strength Absolutely. in it? Absolutely. Yeah, and you're probably using it. More Way now more, yeah, than, than you have in the past yeah, few months. For sure. So definitely gonna be sore. Everyone has their own lens of where a player should be and what they think a player is. But since we've worked with Gavin for many years, we know exactly what his style of play is, how he moves, and so it's important for us to get our eyes on him. It'd be my first time seeing him run in person. Kind of nice, like at least I feel like I'm having somewhat of a normal off season. Yeah, not fully, but like, I mean, it's good. You're not in a brace anymore. You yeah, clear to do most things. Pretty much everything. Yeah, I gotta hit Dino because I think I'm I can start doing some like ground balls and like a good. lateral launch, ten foot radius. I think I almost feel like the mental grind is, is way harder than the physical, right? This isn't a blessing in disguise, but I think it gives you a different perspective on, on the game, right? Like, I would have given anything to be exhausted in September. Same thing. Come on. Good. Not that you don't already appreciate the game and, and love it a lot, but I think getting it taken away for the first time in your life, like, you just kind of have a whole different perspective and viewpoint and appreciation for it. How was that? How do you feel? Like, I like feel fine. My hammy actually feels good, knee feels good. I feel like I'm not getting this side like as far up. Yeah, so. It's like dragging a little bit, but. So if I can give you that, yeah. So you agree? Thinking about, as you, as you think about driving down, like pushing down and back, knee drive too. So really, yes, you're pushing down and back, but as you come out of the start, I want you to think more knee drive. Knee drives, get, get those knees up so that you can push down and back. It just feels like it's a little bit like... It is. Slight, slight lag. Yeah. Most athletes coming back from a serious injury like this, they have to have confidence. <laughs> so we want to be able to put them in position to feel certain things, to be in certain uh, areas where he has a little discomfort, where he feels like, man, can I do this? Good. Come on. Good. Push, push, push. Come on. There you go. I want to start at shortstop every game, and, and coming off this injury, like, I want to prove that, that I can play every day and coming back from this and that I'm still the same athlete and, and baseball player that I was before, and I think that's kind of my mindset is just, you know, prove to these guys that I'm still the same guy, still the same player. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I'm just one of them. Whichever one is better for you. Thanks, Eddie. Hey, we're in different groups today, so probably not catch. I, I, I think you're in a third group. I looked it up just now. Unless they changed it. I mean, you could probably go through whatever group you want. <laughs> I mean, you're Daniel Hudson, so. <laughs> hey, old guys in camp, we're good, don't worry. They are the elder statesmen of the Dodger bullpen. Daniel Hudson and Blake Trinan are proven veterans who haven't played together as Dodgers all that much because of injuries to each of them over the last two years. It's rolled back in front of the mound. Hudson is down in pain. Hudson is hurt. From everything I hear, it's uh, ACL. 
So it's a potentially huge loss for us. Hudson's 2022 year ended in midseason when he tore the ACL in his left knee. One surgery and a long rehab later, he pitched in only three games last year before injuring his right knee. Trinan battled through shoulder pain for five outings in 2022 before opting for the surgery that would keep him off the mound until this season. It's been a while. All of last year was out, had a couple of like rehab stuff and just, I mean, the process is definitely hard. No one can really prepare you, um, but you know, I think, I don't think, like I know that the, the fact that, you know, I've got a lot of prayer in my life, a lot of family that's behind me and, and God's been good, you know, he's been right by my side the whole way through this process. It's not for the faint of heart, I think, when you've, when you've done this for so long and then me being 34 when this all started, you just don't know what it looks like on the backside for your career. People tell you, you know, ride the process out. When you have an opportunity to be back, you just, you count your blessings. It's truly a gift to be able to put on any kind of uniform, let alone a Dodgers uniform. And um, the people make your experience and we've got a lot of good teammates here. And man, it's just, it's great to get back and just do baseball activities. I always feel like when we first get here, looking at the schedules yeah. is the hardest thing to comprehend. Oh, getting them down here. There's like so much information. I'd say the mind's the first thing to go. Lots of, uh, <laughs> lots of names. It's always interesting when, when guys <clears throat> are doing rehab and stuff uh, for, you know, you're gonna be out for almost a year, or right out of a year or so, and uh, you know, they send you to Arizona, and um, you know, you get to spend a lot of, a lot of time together. Um, us, me, Blake, and a couple other guys were here a lot last summer in, in 2022, um, unfortunately, but uh, you know, we, got, we all got pretty close to each other, and uh, you know, fortunately for me, I, got, I have family here, so I was able to go home every night, and you know, Blake and some of the other guys weren't, so you know, it was just nice to, to, to be able to, to see those guys every day and, and you know, get through all of our stuff together and, and, and support each other throughout it all. Feels good when I'm two this way. Yeah. We've made an executive decision. He's too nasty. Huddy is trying to be nice. I don't want to. No, hurt. I already told him, Huddy. So can you just throw with Chico? Huddy, just be that guy. Be that I approached guy. you about this two days ago after the the, the terrifying I'm game of catch. One bad day catch. Yeah. And that's no. Yesterday was elite. Yesterday was great. The day before, not elite. You know how many times I've seen him throw? A lot. There's gonna be like seven bad ones to two good ones. <laughs> okay, now that's it. No, that's excessive. That's ex I'm a great catch partner because when I'm trying to spin and catch. I come in, I always grab Chico. Can you catch? Can you play catch with him, please? That's your guy. That's fine. Because here's the deal: if he bends weird, we could lose. <laughs> All right? No. He's an elite human being. We're fine. He's an elite human being. His He's... knees are not elite. Okay. You're throwing okay. him. No. <laughs> I just got dadded by Bardo, so I, yeah. Apparently, it was initiated by you. So. Not initiated by me. No, not at all. The cool thing about baseball is like, yeah, we're grown men, and it's a man's sport, but it's also a kid's sport. How long till Bardo comes over? When you get to see each other in the clubhouse, you get to lay back a little bit and and have some fun, razz each other a bit catch up and see how their families are doing. And the whole aspect, just learning to get to know each other again and be a part of the team is just, you kind of miss it and it's nice to be back. Man, we are tight. It's been great, man. Just to have a, uh, a you know, regular spring training that I you know, haven't had one since 2022 and uh, you know, just f so far so good, like not having pain in my knees. There's some stuff I got to stay on top of, but you know I'm, I've been I've been pretty blessed so far throughout camp to to be able to to go out there every single day and show that I still got a little bit left in the tank. It's definitely an interesting group. I think I haven't looked it up, but we probably definitely have uh, you know the oldest bullpen in the league. But um, you know I think that that comes with a uh, territory of, of being experienced, and uh, we just know how to navigate uh, you know a full 162 and then some. There's really nothing you can really throw at us that's that's going to be different than anything we've ever done before. So I feel like that experience is going to uh, play a huge role for us this year. Right line, just a little. Blake looks really good. Um, he's got uh, a lot of hunger, joy as far as being back playing. 
um, being healthy. And, you know, his live BP, that first one, it was like he was throwing wiffle balls. Can go lefty? You know, watching him attack the offseason the way he did, and then coming out and seeing the results, he looks like Blake Trinan. He's checking all the boxes, and it's going to be great to have him in our pen this year. Thanks, man. Feels good. Being able to see guys like Yoshinobu this past spring in the WBC and have data from his outings there with a Major League Baseball instead of the one they use in Japan is helpful. It's a data point. You know, we learn as much as we can throughout the year, throughout the process of evaluating, and hopefully arrive at our best bet. And we feel like we have, you know, a pretty good amount of conviction in Yoshinobu becoming a really, really good big league pitcher. Obviously, the arm talent is real and it's there. His ability to command the baseball is incredible. And watching him in our live BP, Mookie, Freddie, Muncy, Will Smith, we're like, that's the best command we've ever seen. You guys are coming out as some of the best big league hitters there are. And not only did Yoshinobu execute you know, 94 to 96 on the black, both sides, the reactions from our guys coming out of the batter's box, really cool. Freddie was just saying that. I'm, I'm really glad he's on our team. His ability with the four to five pitches uh, and his ability to command the baseball, I think is going to put him in position to help us win a lot of games. <laughs> right? He's filthy, dude. Yeah, just dot, 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 dot. It's, okay. uh, yeah, it's, and his mind just works like he's so like methodical oh, yeah, and yeah, the yeah. stuff four pitches. Yeah. It's really good. Okay, thanks, Willie. Just watching the way this group is coming together so quickly is something that you hope for in the off season when you're putting together a roster. But there's some risk involved with bringing in new players and how that's gonna all mesh. And to see it to this point has far exceeded any hopes we could have had for this early. Ball's hit down the left field line with the guy in first base, okay? Ob obviously, Freddie, you're gonna be the last cut. And then the, old, the key to that, though, is if Mookie goes to second and releases over here, there's nobody at second. That's where, that's where the right fielder can get there, just to cover second on that. Okay. Come on, man. All right. So we have it covered every which way that way. This year, our right fielder will get there. You're damn right, because last year he was damn <laughs> going over there. <laughs> All right? Any questions? I'm sure we'll go smooth. If it doesn't go perfect, we'll do it again later in the week or something. We'll be good. I already know. I ain't right. like In baseball, perfection rarely visits a diamond, no matter the amount of planning and preparation. Especially true before the season begins, Gavin Lux learns lessons the hard way as spring evolves. You know, you go through a ton of mental hurdles, so to get past that, all you, the only way you can get past it is to go out and do it. So, you know, the last step is just, let's get it in a game and play, and uh, that's all I'm really looking forward to doing in about a week or so. 2-1 on the ground is short. Lux is there, he bobbles it, and gets it to first too late. An off-balance throw. He's not on the on the right foot, had plenty of time to make the throw. This basically just an error that doesn't have to be. Well, Dave, just we saw the lineup with Mookie Betts playing at short today, Lux playing at second. Can you take us into the decision? We just felt that it was just, it was time to act right now. It should be less toll on his body overall and give an opportunity to have success. I mean, obviously, it's, you know, it's a little disappointing. It's, it's hard not to, but at the same time, you know, we got three days before we go to Korea, so you got to just move on, and, you know, it does no good for anybody to, to sit and mope around. There's no other option. You know, we got to move forward, and the ultimate goal is to win games. This counts. It counts. Game one, counts. March 20th, 3 a.m. Pacific, 6 a.m. Eastern. Glass now making his Dodgers debut. These games might even feel a little bit more pressure packed to perform 
than the opener at Dodger Stadium will. The people in Seoul are excited to get us over there and see Major League Baseball. Um, I think our guys are really looking forward to it. I really do. Just the experience in itself and to go, you know, play two Major League games over there is going to be fun for everyone. On the next Backstage Dodgers. We cannot wait for opening day there in South Korea. We got the big show on the show, Dodgers. Can't wait. The team travels abroad for the 2024 Seoul Series. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Shohei Otani Mania here in Seoul and across the globe. He's ready for his Dodger debut. Otani finds a base hit to right field. His first hit is a Dodger.